reign upon the throne. Because you are God alone. Because you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloud days are gone. That's why I sing. That's why I sing to you this song. I just want to say. I just want to say that I love you more than. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Somebody sing that with me. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I worship and adore you. I want to tell you. Just want to tell you. That I love you. Lord, I love you more than anything. How many love you today? How many love you? I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you, Lord. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love, Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, lift your voices all over the building. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you, Lord. I worship and adore you. One more time. I love you, Jesus. I love. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. I love you. I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship. And adore you. Just want to tell you, I love you. I love you. I love you. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. That's love. That's love. Jesus went. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. That's love. That's love, everybody. That's love. That's love. Oh, oh. sing it again. Jesus went. Jesus went. Jesus went to Calvary. He hung his head. He hung his head. For me he died. For me he died. That's That's love. That's love. That's love. But that's not how the story ends. But that's That's not not how the story ends. Because in three days. Three days. He rose again. He rose again. That's love. That's love. Come on everybody. Like you and me, that's love. That's love. That's love. They hung him high. They hung him high. Stressed and wide. 
he died. For me, that's love. love. That's love. If you believe it, sing it with us. That's love. But that's not how the story ends. But that's not how the story ends. Because in three days, in three, three, days, three days, days, he rose again. He rose again. That's love. 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 That's
nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you. Nobody but Jesus. Hallelujah. When I was in trouble, you brought me over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad I can look to Jesus. Glory to God. There's a there's a song that's in my heart. I'm trying to think of the name of it. Glory to God. I don't know. Some melody. Um, it talks about dark clouds may rise, stormy winds may blow, but I tell the Lord, tell the world, wherever I may go, that I found a Savior. I know. Come on, is it sweet? He's sweet, I know. Oh, he's sweet, I know. Yeah. Dark clouds, they rise. Oh, Lord, and stormy winds, they blow. Oh, I tell the world, wherever I may go. this morning. Do you love him this morning? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We praise him. We praise him because he deserves all the praise. We honor him this morning. We honor him this morning because he's sweet. I heard Rachel Thompson say, it's so sweet to be saved. It's a sweet thing to be saved. And I'm thanking God for who he is this morning. I honor him today. Glory to God. Amen. It's good to be back in America. Praise you, Jesus. It's good to be back in America. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank God for, amen, uh, Pastor Thomas being with us this morning. Bless the Lord. Amen. And let's give God a praise for our host pastors. Amen. Pastor Bike and Mishka Thomas. Come on, let Amen. Let's make the devil mad. Come on, let's make the devil mad. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Times like these. Glory to God. We ought to be glad we got a Savior. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I want to go, I want to go into something that I went into in, in um, the um, fast track down in, in uh, Fort Lauderdale. No, Founders Week, I believe it was. And um, we've been teaching this everywhere we go because God is, this is what he's saying right now. This, this is the word. Saints, and I'm just excited. I'm excited about God. You see, because when God, you, you know what I'm excited about, and I, I, I don't even know if I can articulate it in a way that you'll really, really uh, understand my excitement, 
But I'm excited because of the millions and millions and millions of saints in the world. God chose us to hear the revelation of Christ. Come on now, that, that's, just, that's just the truth. God chose us to hear this revelation. And that's, that's exciting. That, that's exciting because that says that God is mindful. That God got a purpose for this ministry. Amen. Glory to God. In spite of, you know, I'm going to tell you something. Say, this ministry is bigger than me. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than all of us. Because I, I remember saying years ago, Bible teachers is not Mary Banks. Bible teachers is God's influence in the earth. And that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big difference. Amen. Bible teachers is God's influence in the earth. Glory to God. And, and I, I'm just excited that, that God would come. See, God would come and he would say, let me, let me take the veil off the word. Because you've been teaching something that, you know, is good and it's, it's right, but you don't really understand it. So let me unveil it so that you can understand it. Glory to God. And so everywhere I go, amen, I'm teaching this, and I was, had the privilege of doing the fast track over in Jamaica, and we had uh, a lot of pastors there and from outside the ministry. I did it in Fort Lauderdale. We had a lot of pastors outside of the ministry to come in, and they were blessed. They were blessed by the word, a word that they had never heard before, a word that they, had, that they knew was from God. Even though they had never heard it before, they had never heard the revelation of Christ, but they heard it then. And you know, you would be surprised how many people think that they know what salvation really, really is. Because we thought we knew. We, we really thought we had a handle on it. But God came back and said, let me, let, me, let me talk to you now about understanding. You don't understand it. You're teaching it, but you don't understand it yet. And, and, and he didn't just say that people didn't understand. He said, I didn't understand he said, you, you're teaching it, but you don't, you don't really understand it yet. So he took the veil off the word. And that's enough to be glad about. That's because that's, that's special. That, that, because God, God don't, don't waste words. God, when God, when God talked, God talked because he got a purpose. And God doesn't tell you things just so you can be puffed up with knowledge. When God give a word, it's for the body of Christ. It's for the whole body of Christ. It's not just for BT. It's for the whole body of Christ. So I am anticipating. I know that doors are opening up. I've already uh, gotten some word of how some doors that have opened. We, we can't talk about them right now, but we will. Glory to God uh, soon. But some doors are opening up for this word. Some doors are opening up for this word. We've got two more pastors that are bringing their churches up under this ministry. Glory to God. You know, because they heard the word. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So God is just... He doing what he does. He doing what he does, and I'm I'm just I'm just going with with God. Amen. Glory to God. I want to go into this this word. I believe this was was in the Founders Week, um, chapter four. Every branch is purged. You remember that one? Every branch is purged. Hallelujah. Every branch is purged. Our our uh, scripture. Let's see. From St. John 15. Our scripture is taken from St. John 15, the first verse. I'm going to do the first three verses there. Somebody has a, a microphone. They're going to read. Does this one sit up, Patty? Like that. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> All right. St. John 15 and 1. I am the true vine, mm -hmm. and my father is the husband man. Now, I'm the true vine. When, and I want, you to, I want you to listen to this. Because and, and, um, these, these, this is, uh, 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 translate, was translated from the Greek. We, w if we were to say this, we would say, I'm the trunk of the tree, and you the branch. That's what we would say. 
In, in, in this they're saying, I'm the true vine, and ye are the branches. My father is the husbandman, right? We would say, I'm the trunk of the tree, you the branches, and my father is the one that planted the garden. He's the one that planted the tree. Amen? That's, that's, how we, that's, the, that's the, the layman's translation of this. That's, that's uh, 2014 translation. Amen. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, uh -huh. he taketh away. Uh -huh. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Uh -huh. Now ye are clean through the word, which I have spoken unto you. Now let's, let's look at what he's saying here. Every branch in me, the first thing we got to realize is that he's talking about people that's in him. He said every branch. He's not talking about people that's not saved. He's talking about people that are saved. He said everyone in me that don't bring forth any fruit. So what fruit is he talking about? Some people go to the fact that he's talking about the fruit of the Spirit. But... The fruit of the Spirit is not what he's re referring to here. He's talking about souls. He's talking about souls. He's talking about bringing souls into the kingdom or maturing souls for the kingdom. He's talking about planting something in somebody else's life, do working, doing some work in someone else's life. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about uh, working the gift that's in you. Are you hearing God? He's talking about working... The gift that is in you. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. What is the gift that's in you doing? What can you look around and see that the gift has produced? Are you, are you hearing God? Because you're in him now. You're in him. But what are, you, what, what are you actually doing in him? What is your gift? And he gave us the gift. He gave us the Holy Ghost. We don't have to have a microphone in our hand to work the gift. Come on now. Glory to God. He, what he's saying now, I've gifted you. I've given you, I've given you the best heaven had. I've, I'm in you. I'm in you. So if I'm not working in you, it's because there's something that you're doing to inhibit it. Come on. Are you hearing God? Because I am present. I'm present. He said, now, so every branch in me, now, now this is this, this, this the point, this the part I want you to see here. Every branch in him, that doesn't bring forth any fruit, he said, my father, take it out. He said, my father, my father, take it out. Now, now, now that's, a, that's serious. Because that means that if I'm saved and I'm not doing anything for the kingdom of God, God is going to take me out of Christ and cast me aside. That's what this scripture is saying. He said, every branch in he, what did, read that again, every branch in him that doesn't bear fruit, what happens to it? Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he uh -huh. taketh away. He taketh away. The husband man taketh away. So, he, that, so have you ever seen a person trimming a tree? And, and, and they, they, they cut some branches off the tree? What happened to those branches that they cut off the tree? They die. They wither and die because they have, they have no substance. Right? So he's saying, if you're already in me and you're not bringing forth any fruit, my father's going to cut you off, and you're going to wither and die. Amen. You, are, you, are you hearing it? Then he goes on to say, And every branch that beareth fruit. Now, now if, there, if you're in me, and you are producing fruit. You know, I'm in Christ, and I can look around and see some fruit that I produce. C come on, I, I can. I can look around and see some fruit that I produce. Glory to God. But he said, the one that's in me that bearing fruit. What did he say? He purges it. He purges it. That it may bring forth more fruit. That it may bring forth more fruit. Now, if I look around and I see, I can look and see the, some fruit that I bear. I can see my fruit. Glory to God. I would think, why? Why does God need to purge me? If I'm bearing fruit, are, are you hearing God? Because I'm, you know, I'm not the one that's not bearing the fruit. I'm the one that, that got some evidence. I've done some things in people's lives. I've got people that are testifying that, that, that I've, I've helped them. I've, I've brought them to the Lord or I've increased them in God. 
I've got testimonies. But God is saying that even if you bring him forth fruit, I'm going to purge you. I'm going to purge you. Glory to God. So let's, let's see what happens here. Let's look at what purging really is here. What, is, what does he mean by purging? According to Divine's uh, expository, what does it mean? Can you read that, time? You got to you study that? Okay. Divine's expository, the word purge means to thoroughly cleanse, to purify, and to prune. To thoroughly cleanse, to purify, and to prune. Those are the three main definitions of purging. Purify, cleanse, and prune. Are you hearing God? Are you hearing? Well, let's, let's see how this relates to us. In every instance where the meaning is to cleanse or purify, in every, in every instance now, well, you see this, see this word meaning pruning. I mean, uh, yeah. Well, you see it means cleanse or purify. The cleansing is done by the blood of Jesus okay. in the salvation experience or by the believer in his walk. We're talking about cleansing and purifying. Everywhere you see it, everywhere you see it meaning uh, cleansing and purifying is done either by the blood of Jesus or it's done by us in our walk. That purging, in other words, we can purge ourselves. Okay. Come on, are you hearing God? Yeah. We have the ability to purge ourselves of anything that's unclean that's in us. Yeah. Are, are you hearing God? Yeah. We got that ability. We can examine, the scripture tell us to examine ourselves to see if we're in the faith. Yeah. Isn't that what it say? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Now, notice what it says here. Amen. This cleansing is done by the blood of Jesus in the salvation experience or in the believer's walk. Below are some scriptural examples of this in Hebrews 1 and 3. Hebrews who, 1 and 3. Who being the brightness of his glory uh -huh. and the express image of his person uh -huh. and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Now, what is this scripture talking about? This scripture is talking about Jesus. This scripture is referring to Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. Mm -hmm. when, he, when he made the sacrifice, he purged our sin. This, this is talking about the atonement. Yes. When, he was, when he was crucified. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the scripture says that he died for, for the sins of the whole world. Not only for our sins, but for the sins of the whole world. The scripture also says that by his death, we were reconciled to God. But by his life, we live. <laughs> Are you hearing God? Amen. So now, he has purged our sins in his death. That's what this scripture is talking about. What, is, what about um, Hebrews 9 and 14? What does it say? How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Now that's important. But once again, it's Christ that is doing the purging here at salvation. Now notice what he purged there. The scripture defines that he purged our conscience from dead works. Because we, that's, that's something that the law couldn't do. Those, those, those sacrifices that were offered under the law, they couldn't purge our conscience. And you know, when your conscience is not purged, when your conscience is still a, is full of sin and, and trespasses, it can't judge what you do in the flesh. C come on, somebody. Because the conscience was put in the body to judge. Are you hearing God? But when it's full of sin and trespasses, it no longer can judge. It's under captivity as well. So in salvation... Our conscience, our spirit, our inner man was purged as well at salvation. Are you hearing God? Again, this was a work at salvation. Let's keep reading. Amen. 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. Purge out therefore the old leaven, mm -hmm. that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. Mm -hmm. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. He's, now that's instruction to us. Purge out the pride. O leaven. 
You know what leaven is? Well, we would call it baking powder. We would call it today baking powder. And what is it, or yeast? What, what is it used for? To make bread rise and to puff it up. Glory to God. I've, I've eaten some of the best tasting rolls, but, they was, but most of it was full of air. It was just, <laughs> glory to God, they, they, they full of air. Amen. They puffed up. So now the, the instruction to us is to purge out the old leaven. Purge out our pride. If we got any pride in us, let's get rid of it. Because one thing is for sure, you cannot, you cannot serve God with pride. Because pride exalts you above the laws of God. Come on, are you hearing God? Pride takes you and lifts you up and makes you somebody. Glory to God for God to knock down. Amen. Because he said the proud shall be what? Abased. It's the humble that God exalts. Isn't that right? It's the humble that God exalts. Glory to God. And so he, our instruction now in purging, if we're going to do any purging, he said, purge out the, the leaven. You know, if you deal with pride, you've just about dealt with all sin. If you deal with pride, you've dealt with any sin that you can get in. Because most of the sin we get into is because of our pride. Because pride is selfishness. Come on, somebody. Pride is selfishness. Pride says I. Pride is about me and I and mine. Are, are you hearing God? So if I can deal with my pride, I can please God. If I can deal with my pride, I can get along with people. If I can just be humble, if I can humble myself and walk in humility, glory to God. He, and that this, then this is, you know what, you know, you, know, you know, with God, with a saint, we don't have no options. We either do this or we go to hell. Hello, there's no options here. He's saying now, glory to God. He, you know what God said? God said, I don't care how long you've been doing something. I don't care. I don't care how long. I don't care how good you've been. Uh, glory to God. I don't care how much you done produced while you were doing it. But now if you got some pride in you, sooner or later I'm going to address that pride. Come on now. Glory to God. Because see, I was in ministry a long time before God actually said to me, I don't like you. Come on. Glory to God. I was producing fruit. I was producing fruit, and God said, I don't like you. Now, what you going to do, you, and then you can look around church. You got, got over 20 churches, you, and most of them you started yourself, and, and you got all these testimonies of people saying, how, oh, Doc has blessed me, and, and Doc has done this, and Doc has done that. But then now when the smoke clear, God say, but I don't like you. Uh, everybody patting you on the back, but I got a problem with you. Hallelujah. Now I got, what is my choice here? If I want to go to heaven, I don't have one. If I want, if I want to be holy, if I want to meet God in peace, I don't have, I don't have an option here. The only option I got is to humble myself and say, God, what is it you don't like about me? Show me, show me what it is. Just show me God. And you know what else I do? You know what else I did? I fell on my face and I said, thank you for telling me. Because you didn't have to tell me. You could just let me die in my sin. Come on, somebody. I just want to thank you for telling me. I want Because that means that you care something about me. That means you ain't finished with me yet. Because you're giving me an opportunity to repent. Glory to God. And because you're giving me an opportunity to repent, I got some hope left. Come on, somebody. I got some hope left. Glory to God. Because you could turn me over to my enemy. Come on, somebody. Like David said, whatever, I know I've done wrong, but God, whatever you do, don't turn me over to my enemy. Glory to God. I'll take your whipping. I'll, I'll take your chastening. But glory to God, amen, don't turn me over to the devil now. Because the devil ain't going to have no mercy. Come on, somebody. The devil hate me. Glory to God. You going to chasten me, but you love me. Come on, somebody. We tear our children tail up, but we love them. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. I'll take the whipping. 
I'll take the whipping, glory to God. I'll be whatever you tell me to be. I'll do whatever you tell me to do, glory to God. Just don't, just don't you walk away from me. Don't you turn your back on me, glory to God. You stay with me, God. Glory to God. If everybody turn away, don't you turn away. Glory to God. Don't you hide your face from me. Hallelujah. I know how Job felt. Job, glory to God. Amen. God done turned the devil loose on Job. And Job, Job, Job was all right. Job, Job was all right with, with, with all of the stuff that was happening to him. But you know what to disturb Job? Job said, I, I look in front of me, I can't find you. I look to the right, I don't see you. I look to the left, I can't find you. I look behind me, I can't find you. Where you at? God. I could go through this if I knew you were still with me. If I just knew you were with me, I could handle it. Even if it take me to the grave. I'll go to the grave as long as I'm going with you. Come on, somebody. I'll go to the grave if I'm going with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody tell him thank you. Somebody ought to tell him thank you. We ought to be grateful that God, amen, chastises us in sin. We ought to be glad that God said, I'm sick of you now. I'm sick of you. You better change. You better stop. Hallelujah. We ought to be glad when God beat us like that. When God's tell me, say, I don't like you, I don't like you. I don't care who patting you on the back. I don't care how many souls you done saved. I still don't like you. Because the people you done saved, they'll come in before you will. Come on, somebody. They'll, they'll make it to heaven and you'll be in hell. And amen. That's what God was letting me know. He said, I don't like you. Amen. I said, Lord, what? Humble yourself. You're too high. Just like Zacharias, up at that tree trying to see something. Come on down. Come on down. You're, you're just a little bit too high. Come, come on down. Glory to God. Who you think you are? Come on. Glory to God. Let me tell you something. Don't ever get so high that God can't talk to you. You can't hear his voice when he starts talking to you. Glory to God. Amen. Because, amen, you know what God said about us? He said, our life is just a vapor. A mist. A mist. That's all it is. That he control. Glory to God. We ought to think and we can get up in the morning. We ought to think and we can we can walk. We can talk. Glory to God. We still we still got the active use of our limbs. We still got our right mind. Because some folks don't have it. Glory to God. Some people God done turned over to their sin. Glory to God. And sometimes, glory to God, I, I said, God, you know, I just appreciate you. Because you could have turned me over to my sin. You could, have, you could have turned me over to reprobate. See, because when you get reprobate, you can't even repent. You can't find no repentance. Glory to God. The Bible say Esau looked for repentance, but he couldn't find it. He, had, he was crying and weeping, but he still couldn't find repentance. Glory to God. And it's a sad thing when I can't, when I can't find no repentance. Glory to God. But you know what? You know what the Bible say about repentance? Glory to God. The Bible says God has to grant you repentance. Glory to God. God, see, that's why, that's why it, don't, it, don't, it don't do for us to, it don't do for us to, to, to walk in haughtiness because God is the one that has to grant us a spirit of repentance. We can't even come to repentance unless God draws us. We can't even come. We can't even come back to him except God drawing us. And honey, if God don't draw you to repentance, that means he threw with you. He finished with you. If he don't reach out to you, if he don't say, come on now. See, as big as God is, as big as, as, big as he is, this God created the whole universe. And that God is so mindful of you that he'll say, come now. Come less reason. You're stinking. You're dirty. You're filthy right now, but come on. Come on and let come on and let's talk about this thing. Come on and, and humble yourself. Come on and sit down and, and let me talk to you. Can I talk to you now? Glory to God. Can I talk to you now? Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. And you know what? We better develop some safeguards in our lives. 
I learned a long time ago to develop some safeguards. You know one of the safeguards I got in my life? You know why? When, if I, when I mess up, I can go to God and repent. And God, and God will hear my prayers. Because when other folks mess up, I still got some mercy. Come on, somebody. I still have some mercy. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. I don't forget. I don't forget that today is you, but tomorrow might be me. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. I don't forget that I'm riding high today, but I could be on my belly next week. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. And I don't forget all the many things God had patience with me in. You know something I learned? You know something I learned? I learned truth is sufficient. I learned that. Glory to God. God don't need no help. You just tell the truth. You just tell the truth. You tell what? You show God like he really is. You don't whitewash it. You show God like it is. You show sin for what it is. Because sin is sin. I don't care who is here. Sin is still sin. And God hates sin. If it's in Dr. Banks, he still hates sin. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. So, glory to God, we, we, we so blessed that we know that. We bless that we honor that. We bless that we reference that. We bless that we still have some mercy left in us. We bless that we, you know, the scripture said, said, when, when one fall, now this is what it said now. I'm just going by the Bible. Can I say what the Bible say? This ain't what Dr. Banks say. But the Bible say, when one fall, ye that are spiritual. <laughs> Come on now. It say, ye that are spiritual, go to such a one. Why would God want someone that's spiritual to go? Because that person that's fallen. Need spiritual help. You can't, you can't deliver nobody in the flesh. Come on, somebody. You can't bring nobody to a repentance in the flesh. They need some spiritual help. They need you to open your mouth for they can hear God. They need God to speak through you. They don't need your opinion. They don't need your criticism. They don't need, the, they don't need a, a whole exposition of their sin because they already know what they did. But they need somebody spiritual. Come on, somebody. They need somebody spiritual to come. Somebody that, glory to God, it ain't all about them. Somebody that can focus on, amen, the need of the fallen. Come on, somebody. Come on. I got to focus on, and you know, glory to God, I think about, you know, that when I walk, drive up here, that building up there got, a, got my name on it. You know, it's got, it's got Mary Banks Global Training Center on it. Mary Banks. You know, but you know where I come from? I come from disappointing God. I come from falling and getting up. I come from falling flat on my face and getting up. I come from disappointing people and still God say, get on up. I, c- I come from being a mess. God say, get up. I come from hurting people and God say, get up. I come from being proud and God say, get up. I c- Glory to God, I didn't have to survive. God is the reason I survived. Hallelujah. He's the reason I survived. And I learned that I can trust him in any situation. I can trust God. See, everybody, see people, see people look at outward appearances, Tanya. But God, God said, do you know I made the world? I made the world. Glory to God. I can add and I can detract. Come on, somebody. I can subtract and add and I can multiply. Glory to God. And come on, somebody. God is not short in his power. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. And I want to thank God. I want to thank God. I know that. I want to thank God that I can trust it. And you need to come to a place where you can trust it. You say, God, I'm, I'm going to trust you in this. Glory to God. I'm just going to trust you. Glory to God. I, I, you know, Jesus, when Jesus got ready to go through his greatest trial, you know what he said to his disciples? He said, I don't have too much to say to you now because the prince of this world coming. But I got to make sure he don't have nothing in me. 
And that's what we got to do. We got to purge ourselves to make sure we don't have nothing in us. You know, when there's a fall, see, sometimes people don't understand this still. But when there's a fall, when a man or woman fall, hallelujah, it's not just a test for him. It's a test for everybody that's affected. Come on, somebody. That's a trial for everybody that's affected. Are you hearing God? There's a trial for everybody that's affected. Are y'all hearing the Lord? So God say purge. Hallelujah. And I'm turning this back on. And I st- Hallelujah. I need a password. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. What does Timothy say? 2 Timothy 2.21. If a man therefore purge himself from thee, uh-huh. he shall be a vessel unto honor. Uh-oh. Sanctified. Wait a minute, Tanya. Go, go to 2 Timothy 2 and read a couple of verses up ahead of that. And let's see what he's supposed to be purging himself from. Okay. What, what, is, what is he saying if a man purge himself? What is he talking about? 2 Timothy 2 and... Um, Put it in context. Um, 19. Okay. Okay. 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. It does what? Standeth sure. The foundation is sure. Yeah. See, what, the first thing we got to find out is, are we saved? Amen. Come, come on now. Am I saved? That's right. That, that's, that's the foundation. Because everybody's saying, Lord, Lord, ain't, ain't saved. saved. C- come on. Come on now. Some, 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 some ain't saved. Glory to God. So, the fa- is the foundation sure? Mm-hmm. Is, is your foundation sure? Because the one, the one that God's put us on is sure. Amen. But are we on that foundation? Read. Having this seal, uh-huh. the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Uh-oh. God know what? Those that are his. God know who belong to him. God know who belongs to him. And he has a way of revealing it. God got a way of showing everybody who belong to him. Glory to God. He got a way of showing everybody that they're his or that they're not. Are, Are you hearing God? Are you hearing God? Amen. And that's why it's important. It's important for me to say to you. That in a trial, when, when, when any of us go through a, a, a test, glory to God, that's a test for everybody that's affected. God set you up. Now, what's your test? If I, if I fall, what is your test? Huh? What is, what, why, why are you on trial? If I fall, why you, how you get on trial? Yeah, how, how do you get on trial? If I'm the one that fell, how you, how you being tra- tried? You better explain that, Dr. Bank. What's, what, you, know what, you know what your trial is? Your response. What's your, what's your response? Are y'all hearing God? What's the response? Glory to God. That's, that's, the, that's your test. That's, that's all of our tests. What is my response to adversity? What is my response to, to persecution? What is my response to offensiveness? When someone offends, what is my response to it? Why did God even let me, let me even entertain it? Why does he even let me know? Why he let me know? He didn't have to let me know nothing. What's the reason? What's the purpose? Because I'm being judged too. Come on somebody, I learned that years ago. I learned that I was being judged too. And I, was, and I, knew, and I understood that, if, that God looked at every one of us and... and and the angels are taking inventory. Okay, th- what you did? Okay. Oh, this is where that one at. Okay. Didn't he say God know those that are his? Amen. How does he know? Hallelujah. Trials. Tests. There's nobody going to heaven that hasn't been tried, tested, and proven to be holy. <laughs> nobody. I'm not going... You ain't going, none of us going until God has tried, tested, and we've been approved 
for heaven. Nobody. Even Jesus was tried. Come on now. Jesus was tried and tested and proven worthy to die as a sacrifice. He had to be walk around here 33 and a half years and bed not sin. Or you can't fulfill the, the scripture. I got to get another one. If you, if you sin, you, can't, you ain't worthy to die on the cross. Come on, somebody. You don't, you're not even worthy of this privilege I'm about to give you. This privilege to die for the sins of the world. You're not even worthy if you sin. Hallelujah. If Jesus had to be tried and tested, if the devil tried and tested him, what do you think he's going to do with us? Are you hearing God? Are you hearing him? Now, what did he say? But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, mm -hmm. but also of wood and of earth. Uh -huh. And some to honor and some to dishonor. There's some vessels of dishonor in God's house. Come on now. But you know what I'm glad about in that scripture? I'm glad. See, I'm, I'm tell you how I know this. I'm glad that that's not the finale. Uh, that, that's what I'm glad of. I'm glad that, that to know that I have been a vessel of dishonor and I turned that thing around. C come on, somebody. I turned it around. When God came to me and said, I don't like you, and if you die now, you're going to hell, glory to God, I turned that thing around. Amen. So, so I, I, I stopped being a vessel of dishonor, and I picked up some honor. I, I, I came to a place, you know how you get honor? You get honor when God can trust you. Come on, somebody. I had to come to a place where, God, you can trust me now. And I, and I couldn't just tell him that. I had to live my way to it. Come on, somebody. I had to live my way to it. I had to live it. I couldn't just get up and say, well, I've repented now. Glory to God. I had to live it. I had to live it out. I had to prove that I was trustworthy. I had to prove that the things that, that, that God didn't like about me, I changed them. I had to prove that they were changed. Glory to God. And if people looked at me and say, well, I don't know about that. I don't know about doc. I don't know, child. I don't know. Maybe you need to, huh, child? I had to suffer that because I'm the one who evoked that. I had to suffer the talk. Come on, somebody. I had to suffer the discouragements. I had to suffer the thing, the, the, the fact that some people felt like I wasn't going to never change. I had to suffer that. I had to suffer it. Wrongs I've done that people can look at and say, well, she did me wrong here, or she did me wrong there. Glory to God. Amen. And knowing that there's nothing I can do about that now. I can repent, but ain't, I can't change it. Glory to God, there's some things sometimes you cannot change because they're already done. Glory to God. But, but I'm glad that God got the final say-so. Glory to God. I'm so glad, amen, that God gave me an opportunity. I said, God, if you let me live, if you keep the breath in my body, glory to God, one day you're going to wake up, glory to God. You're going to see a woman when she wake up, she's going to be a vessel of honor. She's going to be somebody you can trust. She's going to be somebody that your people can love. And if, if it had been left up to, to my judges, this, 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 this church wouldn't be here. If it had been left up to my judges, all the souls that have come in since then wouldn't be here. Uh-uh. If, if it had been left up to the people that had no faith in me, huh? the people that departed from me, Say, oh no, she, honey, God gonna shut that down. God ain't, she ain't gonna, she ain't, that ain't gonna last. Honey, honey. If it had been left up to them, huh? God wouldn't have added. Added every year, added. Added every year. Glory to God. God wouldn't have raised us in righteousness. Every year, pour out a word that began to cultivate us and, and, and made us respect God and love God and respect holiness. We respect holiness. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. He said, if we got it, he said, if there's any iniquity, purge yourself. He said, purge yourself. Purge yourself. Glory to God. Now, let's see here. Go back to uh, let's go over here. You got you reading the study guide, honey? Okay. Go over here to this next page, page two. 
what, 21, page 21? And uh, uh, purging, read that definition of purging right there. However, in No, John, purging is the cutting away. Oh, pruning. Pruning, I'm sorry. Pruning is the cutting and removing of parts of a fruit tree. Now, we just talked about cleansing and purifying, because mm -hmm. that's what purging means. But now it's got another definition called pruning. This is the one God does. The Father alone does this one. Mm -hmm. Jesus, Jesus said, my daddy does this. He prunes the tree. He prunes that branch. Now, now read that again. What does it say? Pruning is the cutting and removing of parts of a fruit tree. Uh-oh. It covers a number of techniques uh -huh. that control growth, okay. remove dead or diseased wood, uh -huh. and stimulate the formation of flowers and fruit buds. Now watch this now. Remember, God purges the branches that's bringing forth fruit. Mm -hmm. You ever seen a tree weighted down with fruit? It might be weighted down with fruit. But there's something else on that branch. That branch just got all this fruit on it. But then, have you ever seen vines that grow up? Vines will grow up and, 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 and hook themselves onto a branch? Yeah. Come on, somebody. Huh? Yeah. Vines will grow up and, and hook themselves onto the branch. And, 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 and watch this now. Watch this. If, that, if those vines are strong enough, they weigh the branch down. They pull the branch down toward the ground. The branch can't grow upright. See, pruning is to control the growth pattern. That's what pruning does. So the, the gardener, he got to come now, and he got to clip away all those, all those vines that's growing up around. Oh, it's fruit on the tree, but it's got some other stuff on it too. It's got some other stuff that done growed up. Glory to God. So the gardener comes and cut, cut those those, those outside vines off the vine mm -hmm. so that it can produce more fruit. But read this definition. There's something I want you to see. Thank you. Read, read the rest pruning, of this. Pruning often means cutting branches back mm -hmm. to where they are closer to the parent. Closer to the parent. It may also mean removal of young shoots, mm -hmm. buds, leaves, etc. Mm-hmm. Careful attention to pruning and training young trees affects their later productivity and longevity. Uh -huh. Reasons to prune plants include deadwood removal, uh -huh. shaping uh -huh. by controlling or directing growth, uh -huh. improving or maintaining health, uh -huh. reducing risk of falling branches. Now this is where I want to go. When you got a, when you got a branch that done produce some fruit. Let me tell you some things, Saint. Let me tell you something. We can have a <clears throat> you can have a tree that's producing fruit. And that tree can look around and see what is what it you know, all this fruit. It's in its glory because it's got its fruit. And not pay attention to the vines that's growing on the on the on the on the branches. There's some other stuff that's growing. Some foreign leaves on there. Some leaves that don't belong there are on there. See, we can get caught up in our fruit producing, and we won't, we won't pay attention to these foreign, these foreign leaves that then showed up on the branch, where they come from. And oftentimes, because this is something that a lot, of, a lot of us get caught up in, insensitivity. That's a, that's a, that's a vine. That's a foreign vine on your branch. You can get to be insensitive you can, because you see the fruit. You're looking at the fruit. So you're not sensitive to the fact that, that there's some, there's some foreign, foreign vines growing up on that branch and it's weighing the fruit down. It's weighing the fruit down. And sooner or later, notice what the, she said, that, that the pur purpose of pruning is to keep the plant to reduce the risk of the plant falling away from the, from the trunk of the tree. That's the purpose of, of cutting it back so that, and cutting all that stuff that's weighing it down. 
cutting all that stuff off that branch that's weighing it down because when you do that, when you do that now, when you cut all that stuff off it, now the branch got more chances of survival. But when it's being weighted down, the more it gets weighted down with foreign, foreign plants on this vine, the more it weighted down, the more chances of it breaking off. And pruning is done. God prunes us to keep us from breaking off the, the branch. He doesn't want us to break off the vine. So he prunes us. He cuts us back. Glory to God. And so God start cutting. He start cutting. He start cutting. And you know what? You know, you know, <laughs> you got too many leaves on you. You got too many shoots going out on you. Let me cut some of them off. Let me cut back some stuff. Glory to God. Cause, amen. See, see, sometime a tree in it's all its glory. Glory to God. But you can't really see the glory in some branches because they got too much stu- other stuff on them. Come on, somebody. It's got too much other stuff. So God got to cut away all that stuff. Now, what is, he, what is the purpose? The purpose is to control the growth pattern. You see, God don't want us to get so caught up in what in fruit producing that we get proud. We start walking in pride then. Cause we and, and, and we start walking in self security. We start feeling secure within ourselves. Or we may say out of one side of our mouth, look what God has done. You know, we, we understand that God has done this and God has, has brought me to where I am and, and look what God is doing through me. But our actions speak differently. Our actions may say, you know, look at what I've done. And, it's, and I'm secure in it. You know, <laughs> hello, like Nebuchadnezzar. He was secure because he's the king of the whole world. But now who's going to come against him? He's the king of the whole world. But there's a God in heaven. And you need to learn a lesson, Nebuchadnezzar. You need to learn a lesson. You need to learn that, that the, the powers that be are ordained of God. That you, you, that you were made a king because God made you a king. You didn't make yourself nothing. And sometimes we can, we can get busy in fruit producing and, and look at the fruit and forget about what's growing on that vine other than the fruit. But God will never forget because God sees he sees what's going to strangle that vine. He sees that that branch is being strangled. So he starts cutting back. And you know, when you start cutting things, it hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It don't, it don't feel good to be cut. Nothing don't, no, cutting don't feel good on nothing. Whether it's a tree or whether it's a person. Cutting don't feel good. Amen. But it's necessary. I say it's necessary. Glory to God. And God will do it. In his faithfulness. And what is he doing? He's trying to bring the branch closer to the vine. He's trying to bring the branch back closer to the tree. Because as long as the branch is close to the tree, it's stronger. That's where it's strongest at when it's closest to the tree. That branch is strong. Glory to God. It's when it gets way out there and grows so far, way out there. Glory to God, in the trunk way over there, in the branch way over here, don't have no much strength. Something can get up there and wrap around it, glory to God, and just break it off. Are you hearing God? But God will cut it back. He'll take that branch and cut it back. He'll cut it. No, you're too long. You, you, you don't grow too far. Let me, let me cut you back here. Let me cut you back here. No, you need some more cutting. Let me cut you back here. Glory to God. God will cut you all the way back. And what did he say now? I'm cutting you back so you can produce some more fruit. I know how to produce. I know how to preserve the fruit you already produced. <laughs> Come on now, let's don't miss that. God know how to preserve whatever fruit we done produced. Didn't he tell you, I know the ones that are mine? You don't have to wonder about that. God is the one that does inventory. That's why he told us, let the wheat and the tear grow together, because you don't know the tear from the wheat. Glory to God, all of them look alike. To some of us, all of them look alike. But God said, now, 
and that branch and growed out so far. Oh, you, then you know what that growing out so far means? Glory to God, you started over here. Glory to God, right here, right here at the trunk. But God started blessing, and you start growing, and you start growing, and you just grew, and grew, and grew, and grew. But when, see, see, the devil was watching the growth too. The devil watching, and the devil walked right alongside you and watching you. Growing, growing. And the devil will wait till you get far enough from the, from the trunk of the tree. When that, when that branch done grew all the way over here, now the devil say, this my chance. And it'll wrap around that branch. And it'll put a stranglehold on it. And God say, okay, let me cut you back. Let me cut you back. And God will start cutting that branch back. And he'll cut it back, and he'll cut it back. And he know how far to cut it, because he know your strength. He's going to cut it according to your spiritual disposition. He's going to cut it according to your pride or your humility. Come on, somebody. He's going to cut it ac- according to, to your, 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 the way you deal with him, your relationship with him. That's what's going to determine how that branch is cut back. And God will cut it back, and God will say, Now, I know how to bring you all the way back to me. I know how to bring I can cut you all the way up to here. But don't miss this now. He, had a, he told us he had a purpose for cutting it back. See, a lot of people think when, when something is cut back, it can't, it, it's through. God said, I cut it back so it can produce some more fruit. Glory to God. I don't deal like the world deal. Glory to God. If I'm not, let me tell you something. If God ain't finished with something, you can't stop him from using it. Come on, somebody. You can't stop God from using something that belongs to him. You, you can't. Glory to God. You can't stop him. He'll cut it back. Why are you sitting there? You know why you're sitting on that seat today in the front row? Because nobody couldn't stop what God wanted to do in your life. You couldn't even stop it. Come on and shout glory, somebody. Glory to God. Amen. We got to remember. We got to remember. You know what I'm saying? Let's see. Oh, you know, I, I don't know about Sister Patty because she just did this and this and this and over and over again. I don't know about Sister Sharon because she just, honey, she just been out there so long and that and that and that. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When God, when God got a purpose, see, we don't know what it take for a person. We don't know what it take for a person to submit totally to God, but he does. He know what it take. He know what it take. We the one put these dispensations on things. And, and you know, and when we put the dispensations, we always put the dispensations in somebody else's life. We don't never put them on our life. You know what I always think about? I always think about how many times, and maybe somebody else will think about this too. I'll, every time I hear something of this or this and the other, you know what I always think about? How many times I get on my knees and say, God, forgive me. You might not know nothing about it. Might not have done nothing personally to you. But I remember the times that I get on my knees and say, God, forgive me. I know I said something I wasn't supposed to say. I know I, I, I did something I wasn't supposed to do. I know I heard something I shouldn't have listened to. Something I've done wrong. Glory to God. And I get on my knees and say, God, forgive me. You know every time he forgive me? He forgive me every time. I, does anybody remember how many times you said, God, I ain't going to do that no more? You, you forgive me this time. I ain't, you ain't going to find me here no more. Come on, then, then did it again. Before we even get up good, we done did it again. Amen. Amen. And, and, and then one day, one day God got our attention. One day we realized, I can't, I can't, I can't God, God, God may kill me now. We get serious, and then we change. We change, and God don't have to worry about that no more. But how many times we did it before we change? Let me tell you something, baby. That's why the scriptures say, purge yourself of iniquity. Because, see, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know no other way, Angie, to be but straight up. If, if, if I'm a fornicator, and you don't love people, we both go in the same place. Now, that's just, that's just God. If, 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 if I'm an adulterer, adulterer, 
Amen? <laughs> and you got iniquity. Guess what? We're we, we, we we going to meet up at the same judgment. And the same angel is going to be excluded. One going to be on, you going to be on one side of that angel, I'm going to be on the other side going into hell. Because the scriptures say he's going to bundle us up. He's going to bind me up right with you. Glory, I don't care how many messages I preach. I don't care how many churches I got. I don't care how many people I've gotten saved. If my heart ain't right. He, I'm going to be buying right with you if you was the adulterer, the fornicator, whatever you were, and all of us going to hell. Purge. Purge. Huh? What God did to Paul in 2 Corinthians 12 when he said, lest I should be exalted for the Abundance of revelations. God kept cutting him back. Because he knew too much. He saw too much. Why do you think this is happening to me? Because everything that happened to you happened to me. Huh? Because of the abundance of revelation God has given us. I've received an abundance of revelation. I've received word that, that, that preachers <coughs> wish they knew. I receive word you've heard teaching that you ain't never heard nowhere. <coughs> so God cut me back. He cut me back. He pruning me. He pruning me. Huh? This is a messenger Satan was sent to buffet me. Yeah. Because anything that affects you affects me because you, you're mine. You may have a bunch of teachers, but I'm mama. Don't forget that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Glory to God. And, and so, see, see, things become bearable. Job would have been, could have bared what he was going through easier if he, could have, if he under, could have understood God was responsible. If he, if he could have just communicated with God. And that's what I am grateful for. We can still communicate with God. God is still communicating with us. Glory to God. And if God is communicating with us, that means he ain't finished. He ain't finished. You can't count God out. You can't count God out. You know, I'm, I'm glad we can smile. You can't count him out. You can't count God out. Glory to God. And see, I want you to learn something about pruning. Pruning, cut it back. Closer to the parent. When, when God is pruning, he's bringing you back closer to him. But he told you why. So you can do some more fruit. So you can do some more fruit. And if you find, if God find you faithful, truthful, and faithful, you'll produce more fruit than you did the first time. Yes, you will. Glory to God, because you're going to become more valuable now. You're more valuable. Why would God elevate you after fall? Because you learn from your fall. You got something now that you can minister to other folks. You got something to say now. You done been there, done that. You know what God's attitude is about it. Come on, somebody. Amen. Is God, does God hate sin? Yes, he hates sin. He hates sin in me. He hated in anybody. He hated in Mike. He hated in Mishka. He hated in you. He hated in, in Patty. He hated in all of us. God hates sin. Is there an excuse for sin? No. There's no excuse for it. There's nothing. We don't, we, we, I don't have, Mike don't have, none of us don't have, none, we don't have nothing. We can, we can do like this. We don't have anything to hide behind. And you know what? We know enough to know it's impossible to hide. Where you gonna go that God don't see? What you gonna say that God can't look through? What face you gonna put on that God don't discern? Huh? What you gonna say that God can't tell whether it's real or not? Huh? What? 
You ain't got but one option when sin is in the house. Purge yourself. That's the only option you got is purge yourself. And thank God he gave us, a, he gave us an avenue. Thank God we got an avenue to purge ourselves. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 I want to go to heaven. And I can't go there being a liar. I can't go there handling the word of God deceitfully. I can't go there with cunning craftiness. I can't have none of that as a part of me. The only thing that's going to get me there is truth. God will embrace me if I walk in the truth. God will embrace me. I don't care how low I fall. Glory to God. If, I, if, I, if I'm on my belly, if I can just turn and look up, sometimes it's good to be on your belly. Sometimes it's good, Mike, to be on your belly. Where the only thing, only thing you can do now is turn and try to look up to glory. Sometimes it's good. It's good. Make sure. That when God talk, when God say humble yourself, when God say, I'm going to open the door for you to repent. Make sure you walk through it. Just make sure you walk through it. Because see, the devil, the devil has an advantage as long as you are alienated from God. But the moment you embrace God, the devil loses his advantage. He loses his advantage. Glory to God. Praise you, Jesus. Come on, let's give God a praise. As his dot was ministering this morning, I'm just grateful for the word. I've been praying and talking to God because he's real. Either we in him or we're not in him. And God began to show me how
keeping in and show me how he's allowed a magnet.